All right, hello everyone. Oh, I hear myself with echo. What is that? Why I hear myself? Is my voice coming with echo? For some reason, I hear an echo. Huh. How is the sound coming to you guys? Do you hear me twice? There's an echo because I'm speaking to you from the sky of Allah. Jibreel is with me. How are you, Jibreel? Are you okay? What is that donkey with you? Oh, this is Al Burak. Jibreel is going to deliver Al Burak. Like what? Like, are you sure? Are you okay? Let us fix this echo. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> I don't know what happened. Let me try to fix it. What is this? Okay, maybe now we'll work. Let us see. Um, you like it, don't you? I'm trying to see what happened, why I'm hearing myself. Okay, hold on. What I did? Hmm. Ah, now I know what I did. Uh -huh. Okay, now, I think here we go, I fix it. But now I know what, uh, how to do this because you know the Muhammadan they love the echo. Now there is no echo, right? But Muhammadan, if you go to their program speaking about Allah, you will see always this echo. They worship it. You know they love it. Look, look. I will give you an example. <clears throat> when the Prophet he went to the seven heaven. He saw the virgins. The heaven of Allah is full of honey and women and wine. But there is no beer. No beer. Take me. Okay, enough of this uh, garbage. <laughs> by the way, this is happened by mistake. <clears throat> I was trying to fix the sound because some of you said uh, the sound is coming from one speaker. I don't know, no, I don't know why. So I said maybe in the setting there is something wrong. So I changed some of the setting, but look what happened. It turned to be an echo. All right, guys. Thank you very much for being here. May the Lord bless you. And today we will not talk about the garbage of Mumu and Fufu and Susu. Good morning for those who are uh, good morning and good evening for those who are in America. And I am in America. Now, uh, <clears throat> somebody saying you admitted your jokes are garbage. Yes, uh, Mr. Don, I admit it. I mean, look at this Don, he's very smart, honestly. I admitted that my jokes are, gar are garbage. You know, I, I don't want to change topic, but let me we'll show you one of my jokes. The Prophet said, if Dawn raise his head before the Imam, Allah will turn his head into a head of a donkey. Dawn, do you think this is a joke? Or Allah was speaking about you specifically? Hello? Hold on, I think you did not get it. I have to fix something for you so you can understand exactly what I am trying to say to you. Now I will read the hadith for you and I'm sure you will hear me very well. Prophet Muhammad said, Does the one who raises his head before the Imam not fear 
that Allah may turn his head into the head of a donkey. Prophet Muhammad, philosophy and superstition. Okay, this is the end of the joke. Do you like it, Don? <clears throat> Don, do you like it? Be honest with me. I mean, you cannot you cannot make fun of this joke now. Come on. I mean, this is not this is not a joke. This is serious. I want you the first time you pray behind the imam to lift your head. Be, actually, no. Hold on. I have to say it with echo. I cannot say it like this. This is something very serious. We cannot play with serious. You know, we have to be. Come on. I, I want, want you, you to take a selfie before. And after, before you raise your head, and after you raise your head. Okay. And guess what? I think nothing will change. Because you were a donkey before you raise your head, and you are a donkey after you raise your head. So in your case, nothing will change. And this is why the, the prophet here would not, I mean, you will not be any help for the prophet. Because how he proved his point, we have to have a change. But not in your case. Because you were a donkey, and what? You became a donkey? Like, hello? Hello? Look how he hides now. He don't want to talk about anything. Uh, no, there is. You know, he told them, like, you know, read the prayer. You know, the guy he is between the legs of his wife, eating walnut. And playing, you know, like shish kebab, hummus. And, you know, you, you don't you do anything. You know, the, the one who call for the adhan is the slave. The one who lead the imam, the, the prayer is somebody else. And Muhammad is uh, playing with Aisha. Anyway, uh, hello everyone. How is everybody? He said it's not him. Okay, it's not him. Who okay. cares? Still, he is a coward. Actually, I, I for sure, I think he is not him. Because this guy, he is a brave to call. This this potato, he don't call. But people say it's him. And he sound close to it, by the way. But anyway, I mean, I just posted there. It's him or not, or not making a difference. Can he make it? Can he do better? No, he cannot. He's a potato. That's why he don't call. Now, uh, we don't want to talk about uh, Muhammad and his stupid stuff and the garbage. But I like this picture. Anyone notice what is nice about this picture? What is really nice for you guys? What what is grab your attention in this picture? What is nice about it? I want I want to read people a comment because you know there is something uh, I, I would like you to uh, practice is to focus on something like a picture as an example and try to find out what is the best for you. In this picture because that will tell you a lot about yourself so uh, I'm going to open my Skype actually and we will take calls from Christians only this time because always we give a chance for the Muslims poor Christian they don't get their chance to call me which is not fair right so I will open my Skype and the one who would like to call us and uh, share with us what you think about this uh, picture. We will put pictures, that is not the only one, because each, each picture is going to show us something different. Um, let us see. <coughs> I'm logging in my Skype. And don't call me, please. Just text me, says, tell me in text, call me, and I will call you. The reason I'm saying that because we don't want people to overlap each other, keep calling, keep calling when we are talking, you know. Just text me and we will call you base, like first come, first serve. This way nobody get upset and we don't take a call over somebody else. All right. Now my Skype is open. <coughs> uh, Tomorrow is my birthday. Do you think you could give me a present by telling me about... 
<laughs> what is birthday? What is your birthday have to do with the chair of uh, with the verse of the chair or chat of the chair? It's a chair. <laughs> Just guys, just please. Oh, this is a Muslim. <coughs> uh, somebody saying that Fifi he accepted my debated challenge. So why he don't call me? I'm live. We can do it even right now. Watch his video. I'm not going to watch any video. Call me. Here we go. Then he accepted the debated talent. I mean, this is a kid drama. We are going to debate about a debate. Just call me anytime. Don't tell me he accepted. Just call. Be a man. All right, uh, uh, guys, don't don't call. Please just text me. I will call you. All right. <clears throat> I'm waiting for text. All right. I see until now no text. Only I see people adding me to Skype. Hmm. Uh, happy birthday? What birthday? What birthday? I don't know even when I was born. I was born a long time ago. Nobody knows. You know, like before, uh, before the museum was established. Long time ago. Uh, hi, CP. Want to work late this morning because of you? Okay, Dominic, thank you. All right. So, who would like uh, to uh, share with us what you like about this picture? Anyone? Ah, nobody is calling because, I mean, texting, because that will make, uh, maybe will lead to analyzation. Analyzation? What kind of English is that? To analyze your personality. <clears throat> my mom would know. I'm sure my mom would know, but she is hiding that, the truth from me. Because, you know, uh, my mom is not like the mother of the Prophet Muhammad. She told him everything. She told him that there's a light came from, <clears throat> uh, you know, obviously there's no light in my case. So what do you think, guys? Call me. All right, we have somebody. <coughs> By calling someone. Let us see. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Yes, you are live on air. What do you like to say to us? Hey. Hello. Yes, you are live on air. I hear Can you. Can you hear me? I do hear you. Go ahead. Hello? Okay, well, he have a bad connection. Next. <coughs> Anyone else? I like how the tree is basic in the middle of the water. Okay, this person is calling again. Let us see. Give him a chance. Hello? Hello. Yes, you are live on air. What do you want to say? Yeah, 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 yeah. Hi. Uh, that best brother. Sorry? Can you hear me? I hear you. Go ahead. Can you hear me? I do hear you. Go ahead. Okay, okay. Hi. Uh, yes, I'm from Veronicia. All right, my friend. You're welcome. Yeah, I think connection is not very good. I understand. It's 
Yeah, breaking up sound. Okay. Well, try to tell us what you like to say, and um, I hear you. No, uh, don't worry. Don't worry about uh, me hearing. I mean, uh, just talk. Tell yeah. us. Tell us what you like to say. Okay. I think the picture is. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm just okay. Uh, I want to say selamat pagi buat Indonesia. Okay. Selamat malam Amerika dan ya bagian lain dunia Eropa ter- terutama. Uh, God bless everyone. Uh, okay, I think about the picture is I don't know maybe it's in some uh, tree in the middle of a lake. Okay, but what does that mean to you? If there is something you like about it? Yeah. Okay. What What do you like about uh, it? Yeah, very peaceful, indeed. Very peaceful. So you, for you, you find peace in this I picture? I think it's very peaceful, yeah. Yeah, I think mm. so. Okay, okay. Anything else? You like it? <clears throat> <laughs> I can hear you. It's breaking now. All right, okay. So we got your answer, my friend. Thank you very much for calling. Good of us. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I know I, we, he have a bad, uh, bad. Uh, see here, like each one of us will see something unique for him in the picture. Our friend here, our brother from Indonesia, he said it's peaceful. This is what he see. He see like a very relaxation. The water is so smooth. It's very nice as uh, how quiet it is. So a quiet. Uh, as we understand from him, is peace. He liked the peace of it. Who else want to tell us what he liked in this picture? <clears throat> there is uh, somebody was, I was re- reading his comment. If you can post your comment, please. I, I, I lost you. We received a call and we... Uh... What else, you guys, you can share with me? What do you like about this picture? So the first point, it was peace. Why Pamela is really beautiful? What make it beautiful for you? I see the tree of life and the river of life. What does that mean in time prophecy? What, what do you mean by I see the tree of life? Do you like to call me and explain to us more? Someone he see, he see it as a swamp. It looked like a swamp. Katie, or Katy, she see it as a swamp. That's interesting. Okay. I see loneliness. That's interesting too. Loneliness. Here, guys, you know, if you look, if you look at the comment, you see that everyone he sees something different. Isn't it amazing? The same picture. Someone he see it as a, being lonely, loneliness. The other person see it as a swamp. The other one he saw it as power of life. The other one he sees creation. Someone sees Khan River. But how come all of us we look at the same picture, but we see something different? Peaceful island. Why we see things differently? Why we are not seeing, we are looking at the same picture, but each one of us, he sees something the rest don't see. I see a bird take a rest. That's interesting too. It can be a rest station for a bird in the middle of this water. Wonderful. Actually, it can be maybe a secure refuge for the bird because here there is a very little, less little predator. They can go there and hunt them like cats, etc. What else? Hmm. Remind me of cats 
your be bread upon the water cast your bread sorry cast your bread upon the water you never know where god word will reach he will make it grow in the most unlikely places this is interesting quote let us read this uh, person uh, the old one he said this i'm going to show his his uh, text reach and he will make it grow in the most unlikely places even in a small piece of good soil that's very interesting actually actually this is here very spiritual so you know uh, uh, either either we see things in a spiritual way or we see things reflect our um, let us say position in life as we heard uh, this is being lonely loneliness uh, this is the power of life uh, power of creation everyone have a different answer the reason we have different answers is because God he gave us a great gift and that gift is that we adjust the image to make it as we want it to be even though it's the same image you know what I mean all of us we are looking at the same image but each one of us he see different thing because God he gave us ability to see things which is within us when we see this as lonely, like being lonely like loneliness I don't know if I'm saying the word correctly but why it is loneliness I mean what's what why this is lonely is it because it's alone there in the middle of the water but if you look at this tree, the tree have many branches, it's flourishing, it's happy. It doesn't sound lonely. You see, the word lonely is somebody is like forced to be lonely. You know what I mean? He is forced to be, not someone he chose to be. So, um, lonely will be stressed, will be unhappy. Um, will be angry what we see in this picture have nothing to do with lonely actually it is flourishing actually this tree there's no competition with it nobody fighting with it over light or water you know what I mean so everything you see is depend how you want to see it based in your situation somebody asking me a question have nothing to do with topic saying this is about Muhammad CP if Jesus is sinless then why Muhammad is the greatest uh, according to the Quran uh, because he is the one who fabricated the Quran so what you can say I mean I make them I made a book about myself saying I'm the greatest <laughs> garbage in garbage out so the same picture different description different way of explanation different way of understanding the way you understand this picture is you that is you you can write down what you think about this picture and think about what you wrote down and look, you know, uh, we focus in the most, let us say, uh, interesting appearance that this picture is alone in the middle of the water. But there is many things in this picture nobody even see. Nobody noticed. As an example, this tree is in a small, tiny spot but it's spreading its branches away from the base the hands is growing reaching out the leaf of the tree is happy a lot of air a lot of light 
and look at this background lighting. It's like a magical scene. So, everything in this picture is happy. But for someone who don't like to be lonely, he see this as lonely. Somebody suffering from being alone, he see it as lonely. Or somebody is not suffer suffering from it, maybe, but he's scared to be alone. Because many of us, they cannot really handle to be alone. You know, you need, you need people around you. If you're alone, you might go crazy. Let us see. Somebody is trying to call. We said, just text me. I will call you back, my friend. Just text me and I will call you back, please. Okay, let us see. Uh, okay, we have somebody. Uh, I will take you by order, please. Don't call me, just text me. Okay, here we go. I see actually many people calling, they're asking for call. Let us start with the oldest between you in the list. What happened to this name? This appear. There is a, a person trying to call. Suddenly the name disappear in my sky. The one his name start with Olive. I'm not going to say the whole name. Just uh, text me again so I can see you, please. And I will call you. For some reason, the, your, your uh, Skype removed your text. I am not sure what happened. Let us see this person. Uh, okay, here. Uh, yeah, Eric, you just text me in Skype, please, my friend. You said your wife is a Muslim. Uh, I will be happy to talk to you. But maybe not tonight because, you know, it's really late. And by the time I finish, it's going to be extremely late. Um. <clears throat> oh, it's not working. It says that you are... It says you are not online. Let me try one more time. Okay, well, I don't know. I tried many times, but it's not uh, working. Okay, let us see this person here. Um, oh, okay, let us see. Okay, let us see. I will try one more time. Here we go, it's working now. <coughs> hello? Yes, hello, how are you? Hello? Hello? Yes, I hear you. Go ahead. Hi, CP. How are you? It's me and my husband sitting here listening to you. Welcome. God bless you. We love you. Thank you very we much. We see the picture and we see a beautiful, that's a beautiful picture. Okay. Um, um, I don't know. <laughs> it's um, kind of like a nice a tree that you see the reflection in the water okay and then you see the rain and the it looks like a waterfall in the background yeah maybe yeah all right but, okay. yeah cp my wife listens to you all the time she's from originally from iran uh -huh. and she lived among many muslims all right and she she finds it very uh, uh, she's just thrilled um with your mission and and what you're able to accomplish thank you my friend i'm i'm happy to have you both of you i i, I pray that the lord will bless your family and uh, will give you the best uh, to come thank, thank you, you so much. much 
you too and thank you for all everything that you do thank you anything else you want to share about uh, the picture um the picture is i see like the reflection on in the the tr the reflection of the tree in the water which i think it's very interesting and it looks like it's upside down like you see the root on the top i don't know those leaves they look like the root of the tree mm -hmm. and the waterfall or the rain in the background it looks really amazing all right well thank you very much that's it hi <laughs> you're welcome it was nice your, talking do your you. husband want to say anything about the picture or he have no comment well actually i haven't looked at the picture i Ida was looking at the picture so I can't comment at all. All right, no problem. Well, thank you both for calling. I'm happy to uh, to hear your voice. Yeah, same here. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Take, you take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. Yeah. yeah. Actually, you know, look, you see, it's very nice to see a very beautiful couple married and happy, sitting together. They have the same interest, and I see both of them are the same as that tree at this moment in their own house. And they have all the beautiful things they need. You see, it's very beautiful to have a companion who you both enjoy. What do you do together? Not like, well, I like to do this. She don't like it. So it's very beautiful. And this tree actually, for me, it shows something very important. It's a unity that everything in the tree is in total agreement with each other to the point it's making able or let us say it's it, it able the tree to be in balance even though it should be weak because there is not too much soil there everything is water but look the tree is standing firm happy even though it's a small tiny ground to the point even the roots they are coming from the ground and they are appearing so sometimes we judge a tree by the roots that to be weak but this tree must be very powerful to be able to survive in the middle of the of middle of nowhere no other tree there there's she she is by herself if i can say the word she and uh, the sister who called us she said very interesting thing look not not no, not not even one of us was able to mention that there is like a waterfall behind. Because if you look at this color, this color is strange. And here you notice that somebody was able to see something we did not see. Yet again, all of us, we are seeing the same picture. And the reason for that, because this picture, in order to understand it, you have to be in a situation that situation can be changed which means if you are angry your answer about this picture will be different if you are happy will be different if you are so so will be different if you are bored if you are uh, you know so depend in your situation like the one who says lonely and here there is something amazing god he gave us you see we have four gospels reporting the same picture but each one of them he give us description which is not in the other gospel what does that mean is that like a contradiction no details which is the other one did not mention the same right now as we are talking about the same exact picture our sister here, she mentioned the background. One of you mentioned the lonely. The other one who mentioned relaxation, peaceful. So God, he gave us gift. And the gift is to see what someone else don't see. And someone else will see which I don't see. Which means it's very important for us to learn that it's not just to take a picture and see it as we see it only. We should try to see how others they see it and try to understand what they want and why they are seeing it this way i will change the picture in the screen so we can uh, 
explore ourselves a little bit. Let us see. Let me uh, get the other picture. <coughs> There is many things, you know, in life around us. Uh, we see them, but they don't really uh, mean much, unless we focus a little bit. I found this picture is interesting. Very interesting. What do you think? Here you see actually, uh, the first thing uh, I see is the power of God. I mean, it's amazing how beautiful his art. This is an art. Nobody can create, nobody can make an art like this. But what made this picture so beautiful? What do we see in, in, in it to make it beautiful? In other words, how we see, uh, what, what is a beauty? What is a beauty? For, how you define a beauty for you? For me, I see it a beauty, very beautiful, extremely beautiful. But you know, if you look at this uh, piece of rock, or let's say little tiny uh, hill or mountain, if you see it in different place, I mean, it would not make any difference for you. You would not even notice it. But the existence of this, those things here, give the picture a special fingerprint. Let us say unique. Otherwise, you might find so many of those close to your city or town and they are endless and they mean nothing to you. And then, if you look, let me see first the cloud, I mean the, the, uh, the comment. Maybe I can quote something. Uh, Marijana, she is saying, or he, I don't know, Marijana is a, a lady or, or a gentleman, uh, said, uh, the power of God, the light of life, coming through the cloud is like renewal of life. That's a very interesting. The power of God, the light of life, coming through the cloud is like renewal of life. Very interesting. Very, actually, uh, uh, harmony explanation uh, Yasunon Yasunon saying light on dark cloud very interesting light and dark cloud hmm. it looked like this cloud is trying to make a blanket over the sea but yet this light struggled to go through and was able to go through. Uh, uh, Fatija, Fatija 145 saying, I see the sunlight as God and the small mountain as people trying to reach God. And every time we seek and pray, the mountain, which is people, get bigger and closer to God. Very interesting. Very interesting. What else? Beauty of God creation. There is always light at the end of the tunnel. Smile. That's good. There is always light at the end of the tunnel. But look again. I can imagine uh, Phyllis saying... I can imagine Christ showing in the uh, the cloud. Actually, the Bible says something very uh, you know close to this. Hmm. 
But do you notice here there is something, there is a bright, a bright spot in the picture? Anyone notice the, the bright spot? Alto is saying it's like, look like the Trinity. It's hope even in the dark, George Dominic Saint. Look with me here. And by the way, I did not choose those pictures before. I just look now and, you know, I look wherever it is coming the way. Look at this spot here. Do you see something strange? Isn't it, isn't it really strange? Very strange. You know, if we do not know the nature, we will think that there is something there. You know what I mean? We will think that there is something shiny in that spot. And that shiny thing, the light is coming from down, not from above. Is it true? Look how shiny. It is shiny more than the sky itself. <clears throat> uh, uh saying this is the sun. We, we, I, we understand this is the sun. But you notice that it is more shiny. Oh, the sun is here, right? This is the sun. <clears throat> but in the picture, this spot here is more shiny from the original sun. How that can be? How a reflection can be shine, shine, more shiny than the original? Reflection of the light, reflection bounds, uh, reflection, okay, we know it's reflection. But isn't it amazing that the reflection is more shiny than the sun? You see, uh, <clears throat> uh, Iboni saying the tree remind me of Psalm chapter 1 verse number 3. That's a very good thinking. Okay. We can go back to the tree later. You see, uh, <clears throat> every one of us can see many things. But what I see here, that reborn again from the water, the light come down, and then this light is reborn again, which we call it reflection, coming from the water, shining back at the sky. So the light came down to earth. In the earth, there is a liquid, it's called water. This liquid observed the light, and the light go through it. And this liquid then reflect the light again and make it powerful. It's like baptism. The light come to us. We get baptized. And then we reflect the light of God in everything around us. Even though this is not our light. We are not the origin. We are not the original we are not God, we are just His creation. But God is so powerful in His creation to make such a weak water. I mean, how weak can be? Who is more weak than the water? But in fact, the water is the most powerful element in this earth. But it's weak. I mean, you can put your hand through it and you can cut it easy. It's weaker than cheese. But water is very powerful. So this water, who is very weak, received the light and then send the light back. And the light come back from the light from the water as really as if it's a source of light. And this is exactly how the word of God works. It comes to us and then it go back and it gives its light. It go in the dark and the dark 
became shiny. If you notice with me here, with this light, this light is not coming only in a spot. The light is coming in many spots. Actually, there's a light which maybe we don't even notice coming all the way here. Do you see this area here? Let me let me draw and uh, uh, <clears throat> let me draw a line. Do you see this area? There's a light coming here. So it's like a gate. When the Messiah, he said, I am the door. And nobody can come to the Father but by me. So this is the gate. And the light is in front of us. And the purpose of the light is to give us the guideline where to walk. So we don't get out. And that is the teaching of Christ and the Bible. So the gate is in front of us. The road is clear. What is missing is how we can reach from here, from this point, all the way to this point. Where is heaven? This is very close to what is written in the book of Revelation about how the Lord, he will take us to him. How he will come in the glory of, with his glory of his angels over the cloud. The Messiah, he said, I am the light. And what kind of light he is talking about? It's just a light just to see and, you know, I mean, light, normal light. Or he is the light of the way. Very beautiful picture showing us the ability and the power of God, showing us the beauty of God. In the same time, it's showing us a lot of energy. Very powerful energy. This energy can be very, very aggressive. But look how relaxing it is. But time will come, my friend. And the energy which you think it is just relaxing is going to destroy the evil many they think that christians are weak because they don't use their energy for evil many they think that christians because they believe in peace and love that make them weak as the book of the muhammadan teach them but the fact that is nothing but power you see, when you are a person who is in confidence, you always relax because you are in control. The one who is weak is the one who uses violence. And the one who relax, he will have patient and more patient, a lot of patient. But then the Lord after all the patient he gave us, he will say, your time is up. I gave you the time. And now it's time for you to pay for your crimes. So this beauty, which is presenting God for us, the cloud, the sun, the light, the colors, all of this is nothing but power. Amazing power of the Creator. That power, we should understand that, yes, it's very beautiful. It's very loving. But there's a time where this beautiful, loving power is going to seek justice. It's like human being is like somebody, he abuse the nature. He start cutting trees, throwing garbage in the beach, 
in the water spreading dirt everywhere all what he cares is just some joy and he don't care what will happen so human being this is what he do generally speaking God he gave us this beautiful earth and then we abuse it and he gave us our body and we abuse it with sin and drugs and garbage and madness and smoking I mean all of this you are harming God actually not only harming yourself because God he gave you a body not to burn it by a cigarette or by drugs or to be a crazy drunk person who kill himself and burn his money so this nature here is so beautiful but this nature is going to collect the fingerprint of us which mean it's like you know God he have a file for every one of us with his fingerprint what we did in this nature he gave us all of this the time will come and then he will say okay I gave you this beauty and what you did I give you life what you did I give you children even though I kicked you out from heaven still I blessed you with not to die uh, and not to be gone you see when God he uh, he he punished Adam and Eve uh, giving birth is painful but this pain brought something beautiful to the mother a child she loved to death so God he always he tried to help us we broke the balance we broke the heaven we broke the order we get out of heaven yet he replaced us with heaven and then we go down instead of keeping it as heaven we make it dirty we make it filthy we spread the crimes and we hurt people and then we think we are controlling the earth by a power we own but all of this one day is going to disappear i love really this picture very beautiful and very uh, very telling very telling anyone else want to say something let me see skype if somebody texting when i call okay uh, <clears throat> um, All right, somebody text me. He said he don't want me to call, no problem. Yeah, he agree with something I said, okay. Um, here. Somebody saying here that that uh, tree remind him he made a video about a tree picture today it's reminding me of a famous Norwegian painting it's called Bir birch tree maybe you want to say birth I don't know birch tree in a storm all right uh, Somebody saying to me, call me, and then he says to me, don't call. All right. Call me, don't call. No problem. So, actually, you know, I don't know. Do you like, uh, uh, do you guys, do you like this idea of looking at pictures, all of us, and try to study what we see? This is not something, you know, 
it's good to do it in, in a group by the way it's something very useful uh, as a training for your brain in the same time it can give you relaxation but I'm going to change now the scene and I will try to find a human being and I will try to see what we see in this human being how we see how we see other people around us what we see on them let me uh, try to find something again I did not prepare those pictures I'm just looking right now in the spot when I'm talking to you let me turn it off so I can look I will search in the search engine for a human let us see <clears throat> I see in every person there is something very interesting. Let us take first this uh, this brother here. I will put the picture in the screen. What we see in this person? What you guys can see? But there is something you can see. It's a very simple picture. Just a man wearing his hat. But for me, I look at the face, I look at the eyes, I look at the smile. What do you see in this person? Happiness. That's very good. Happiness. Honesty. Wonderful. I love it, actually. Happiness and honesty. What else? Life fully lived. Wonderful. Look at those guys. Peace, that's true. The guy he is enjoying peace. What else? He has a history to tell, absolutely. Humble, wonderful, simple man, smile eyes, content, wisdom, kindness. Wow. I see that person has had tough life. But he look grateful. That is the best of the comment. Said by uh, Mr. Basic. I see that person has a head. He had a tough life, but look grateful. All of you gave amazing actually description. I wasn't really uh, expecting that much of description of this picture look at this guy I mean it's really very very telling picture very 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 special uh, feature in this uh, in this person his eyes his smile uh, his uh, like uh, his attitude uh, everything about him is very special and it's true everything all of you said he have history to tell he have a tough life uh, actually, you can see he's uh, maybe tired, but still he is very, very calm and happy. He is happy and calm despite life experience. Each uh, of his face, the eyes are both happy and sad. He look satisfied. That's what uh, the old one said. very expressive now how many of us we would like to sit next to this person and try to have a nice conversation with him me myself I would, I would love to right you see uh, God, he gave us, let us say, many things to tell about us. One of the things is face. And the face is not about, uh, I mean, uh, some people, they, they look for certain things in a face. But there is things in a face you cannot deny. Things which is really making the person beautiful. Regardless how, regardless how we look like, even if you look like me, which is very scary. 
This person here, he looked very good, very nice, very happy, very humble, very relaxing, and he has worry-free. And God knows, maybe he's just a poor man here, nothing. But this person is like, you know, like that tree relaxing in the middle of the water. And he don't care about the rest. Very beautiful. Now here the question is, how we can be like this person when we get in his age? How I can have those relaxing features in my face one day when I'm in his age? How he was able to have them? That would be very interesting to talk to him and see what making him that, you know, having this relaxation, this peace. That would be interesting if we can have this person as a guest. Let us see another picture about a human being. And uh, from there, we will go and uh, see the, like, uh, you know, I mean, after we were seeing those pictures, what we, what we learn from each picture. <clears throat> Look at this man. I am trying to show all his face in the picture, let us see, to put it for you on the screen. What do you think about this person? He have a long beard. His hair, let me try to, to make the picture, even though it's going to show too much out of the frame. What do you think? Scared? Mimi said he is scared. Angry one. Sad. Sorrow. Hard life. Homeless. Dislike on his face. This man, he have a very hard, very hard life and look very unhappy <laughs> just woke up guy <laughs> that's funny one too much thinking not happy rough day he have a battle with something inside him he have a battle ah, with something inside him okay What else? What else you see? Blind? Wrinkless? Fear or sadness in his eyes? Hangry? I'm not sure about that hangry thing. Truthful? But still living? People like that are not hated full of worries okay now i will tell you what i see maybe maybe none of you saw it that is look like me but i'm not sad um i try to get away from being serious thinking about things deeply, looking and concentrating in things as if you are out of this world. The one before him was very relaxed, which means he's not really worried about anything. He's just sitting, relaxing, happy. This guy, is his brain is like 
Anuk is going harder and harder and harder to the point look at those wrinkles in his face life can be very tough on you if you are a person who think a lot especially if you are thinking about others more than about you everybody relax except you everybody sleep except you somebody said Sophia she said a good word overthinking this person is very serious and he is not taking it easy He's not taking it easy. So you see many of you start saying he is sad, sorrow. Maybe he's sorry for you, for me. You see, sometimes the look in our face about sorrow doesn't mean he is sorrow for himself. Maybe he's sorrow for this world, how crazy it is. How it became disgusting. Overthinking is something and being a thinker is something else. You see, uh, <clears throat> when you read the gospel, you will find that everyone who is mentioned in this gospel, they are very deep thinkers. Paul, Peter, I mean all the names without counting. This person, for me, he fit to be a disciple. Some of you see him as a homeless. I don't think he don't have a home. You see, the homeless is somebody who don't have a brain. And he is not thinking. Someone he have no worry. That is a homeless. He will worry about what? Especially if you are a homeless who live in the West who decide to be homeless by yourself because you are lazy and you want to take drugs, you sleep under the bridge because you don't want to do, go to work, yeah, you don't want to have a normal life, so you decide to you know be hippie. This guy, I don't think he's a hippie. I think this guy maybe he accomplished a lot of things, maybe not necessarily to be uh, money. You see, because we are judging by the appearance, like, okay, look at his hair. So always we know when we look at the face of a person, like this person, we see negative things. None of us see something positive. But in fact, I see that this person have a lot of positive things. It's going to be very interesting to learn from him what he went through. Uh, let us see one more picture and see how we think about it. You see, in the first picture we, sh we show you, it was very positive from you, all of you. But here it was the opposite. Almost all of you have a negative thought about this person. All right, we got something different here. What do you think about this man?
when you thought? What do you what do you think about this person? Hopeful, healthy, enjoying life, smile hunter, cheerful, brilliant, perhaps genius, genius, a yeah, genius, okay. As Sonia said, how are you, Sonia? I saw your video, you're a wonderful person. Welcome to our chat. Uh, I want to hug him, okay. Old but fit and a sport guy, <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's a good one grandchildren plenty happy person i see my father on him that's a wonderful statement i see my father on him that's that's amazing okay, but what make you think all of those positive things about this person i mean why we just change faces the one before him he was sad for you angry what happened i mean how how we come to all this conclusion from a picture A funny old man like to joke. Actually, yeah, I agree with you. His guy, he he's really relaxed, and obviously he's very friendly, right? So look what happened. We are judging by the face that this person is very friendly, uh, down to earth, humble. He's one of us. He's not somebody to show off. Hmm? That's wonderful. But don't you think this is not fair? That we are sh saying all those positive things about a person we do not know just because of his face. The same we did exactly to the previous person. We said tons of negative things about him just because of his face. Now, how many of you agree that we should judge the person by his face? Someone asking, saying, "Will you ask, you ask what do you think about him? Um, uh, yes, I, I ask you what do you think about him. I'm seeking an answer. And the same now, I'm asking an answer, a question. Do you think it's fair to judge a person by his face. We should not do that, right? But all the ones we spoke about, we judged him by the face. So look what happened. Because a person, he have a friendly look, nice, uh, let us say, attitude. You right away start giving your impression that he is friendly, he is nice, he might be a criminal. He might be a beast. The one we saw him that he is the aggressive one, he must be the best between them. The Messiah, he said, from their fruits you shall know them. From their fruits. Uh, Mr. Proud Indonesian, uh, let me show you an example of the Muslims. Uh, <clears throat> a drama. Let me hold on. Let me freeze that uh, the text. Okay, this is Indonesian Muslim. You know they are angry because I make a lot of Indonesian leave Islam. Look what he said. Arabian prophet. Are you talking about yourself now because you have not a good-looking face, brother? Yes, my brother. I don't have a good-looking face, but I have a very good-looking brain. 
and that is really important from you having a good face because with your face it doesn't make a difference but with my brain it make a difference so this is how foolish you are and by the way do you know how i look like you don't know i make fun of myself because simply i'm very humble extremely humble i don't want to hurt others by making fun of their look so i make fun of myself but because you are very hateful you did not understand our conversation trying to learn something good from it i just said that jesus said from the, their fruit you shall know them and this is how we learn about you mr proud indonesian muslim your fruit is ugly go and see what you are doing to the christian in indonesia if islam is a good religion you should be nice to them you should be protecting them you should be giving them their freedom to worship and you should be a very wonderful person with every human being around you not only the muslims but with the christians the hindus the buddhas everybody from their fruits you shall know them so my friend don't be like the muslims who follow muhammad the fool the muslims they have videos about muhammad how white he is go watch it anyone watch the video there's a guy his name is mufti uh, the mufti yeah we look at the moon we look at the prophet we look at the moon we look at the prophet we look at the moon we look at the prophet we look at the moon we look at the prophet and brother my brother the face of the prophet was whiter the moon what the heck this is how you are racist you are following a racist cult leader who they are praised for he is white to the point they are writing in their books do you know how white under his arm do you know how beautiful his belly bottom in the front of us we have an asian person and we put a white man and a black man and all of us are equal in islam no muhammad even he made fun of the look of the black people and he claimed that the black people will go to hell and muhammad he made fun of the asian people and he claimed that asian people have a face which hit by a hammer so we go back to our topic because this muhammad and they try to disturb our peace don't let them the Messiah said from their fruits you shall know them so all the person we show in this screen before we should not really judge by the face because some people they have a very tough face very tough but they might be the most friendly people ever you can imagine and there are some people who have a very friendly face but they can be fraud scary criminals Don't, don't let the face fool you. I'm not speaking about this person. I'm not, I don't know him. His face looked very friendly. He looked very nice person. But not necessarily that if you have a nice, friendly face, regardless of how you look like, I mean, the friendly is a friendly, because the friendly doesn't mean that you are handsome, but you are friendly. Let us say, people, when they see you, they relax. They like you. So some of us, maybe they have that face. And some of us, they don't have that face. But it doesn't matter, really. What matters is the fruit. The fruit of this person. Not the face. sadly in this earth we judge even when you get married you marry the face the first thing you like about the person is the face then after you get married the face is start talking and then you will notice that this tongue is like the tongue of the devil regardless if it's a man or a woman most of a human being actually they marry the look 
they are not even marrying the person they are marrying the look of the person there's even some people they have a description there's a description list how tall he or she will be how much she or he weight what is the color of their hair what the color of the eyes and how long the hair and how big <clears throat> madness this is why a human being always when he do that he face a failure because you did not know the person yet you know his look and you judge by his look and you married his look and this look will change every human being all of us all of us i'm not saying i'm not like you uh, for me if i want to marry a woman for sure i would like to marry a beautiful woman right but beautiful for me in which way how we can see beauty and what is a beauty for us is that the friendly face is it a smart woman deep thinking women shallow women because by the way some men they don't like a smart woman a smart woman for them is pain. For me, I think it's hard for me to be with a woman. She is not uh, smart. It's going to be very painful, actually. And I would be proud about her to be even smarter than me. Many, because they are not self-confident, they don't want competition only one smart person in the house because if we have two smart who is going to be in control here right because he is not self-confident so he think if the wife is a smart educated that is a threat for him so we shall not relate in a look to make decisions Does CP like Indonesian women? I mean, my friend, what's uh, what's wrong with Indonesian women? First of all, I never met one. Actually, I did, I think, once. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, women are women. Indonesian women, Arab women, American women, white, black. Women are women, and men are men. All of us, we have a blood. All of us, we have heart. All of us, we have emotion. All of us, we love, we, you know, we, we get happy, we have sadness, we are human. There's nothing that's called Indonesian, and this does not exist really, unless you are racist. What is exist is the quality. So instead of focusing in a look of a face or a shape of a body, why we don't focus in the quality this person for me would be wonderful if i know what he do how helpful he is to the society how much he accomplish how many people loves him because maybe he is a friendly by the face but maybe he harm many there's some uh, very good looking friendly face even they are priests but they are child molesters like the prophet of the Muhammadan. It's very important that we don't judge a person by his look. And actually, this is why I wanted to share those video, you know, pictures with you. And we would do that from time to time. We choose different topic, uh, different pictures, because. You know, life is, is, is a story, and people who are before us, they bring a lot of stories. Now look at this picture here with me. What do you see here in this picture? Let me, let me make it bigger. What do you see in this picture? Anyone can tell me something?
What do you know? A Muslim is talking, just wait. A Muslim abroad in Indonesia, Muslim saying, how do you know the quality of a person without first impression? Doesn't matter what is your religion. All people will look at the look first. Yeah, this is for you because you're a Muslim. Jesus, he gave us the wisdom as a guideline. He said it from their fruits, not from the first impression. Jesus, he said, be aware of false teacher who come to you in a clothes of a sheep, but they are wolves. You see the wisdom? So the first impression is a sheep. The last impression you will be in his dish. This is how why, and this is why you are a fool following Muhammad. We are following the most wise, amazing wisdom, wisdom of God. They come to you in a clothes of a sheep, but they are wolves. They will eat you alive. That is the teaching of my Lord. Now, what do you see, guys, here? Two older friends together. Wonderful. What else? They are planning to have coffee. Okay. Two older friends talking to each other. Um, they know known each other for years. Genuine compassion. Okay wisdom confused old man why you say that guys look look here dv with my respect to dv look what he said look what he saw in this picture confused old man how in the world this person look for you confused like what he did exactly <laughs> what he did why you are seeing him confused That's very strange. One happy, one confused. Why? Okay, listen. There's a conversation. There's one is talking, there's one is listening. The one is listening is giving full attention. Let us zoom in in the picture. And the woman here is listening. So how that can be confused? Actually, it's the opposite. Because a confused person, he cannot focus. A confused person, he will not even listen. The man is talking, the woman is listening. And actually, I see a very interesting moment here. It's like history. All the lives of those two people who they are in very old age is coming to a moment. They met. And here I notice that this old man, he is holding two sticks in his hand. He have two sticks, which means hardly he can walk. And yet he got the time and the moment and the joy to stand and wait and to talk to this lady. Look like this guy, he knew how to live. Or let us say, even though he is in old age, yet he is enjoying his old age. And he found a moment which is very interesting when he saw an old woman but maybe she is not in his age or maybe she is in his age but she is in better health to talk about their life do you remember this person do you see that person god knows what they are talking about but in this moment here i see that why we don't look out ourselves in this picture why you think what do you think if you are in his age what you will be doing why we always when we look at old people we see something not nice uh, confused as somebody said you will be there my friend you will be in his age it's just a matter of time this guy one day he was a very healthy jumping upside down 
go into the fifth floor in two seconds. You know, like very healthy. And look at him now. That is you. That is you if you are a man and that is you if you are a woman. That is us. The problem is that we always look at them as if they are from different world just because we are younger. And here you notice that a human being because of his foolishness he forgot that he will be there one day in the same corner holding the same kind of a stick and maybe even you are not lucky to stand like him this guy he can walk there's many people in his age they cannot walk so I advise you when you look at all people not to make fun of them and uh, say silly stuff but because this will be you it's just a matter of time for me actually I see a very peaceful person humble happy somehow and he have an interesting conversation and obviously both of them they are enjoying it otherwise there is no way to old people who get tired fast from standing to stand and talk shall we show more pictures or enough what do you think guys enough pictures Do you like this uh, training? It's, it, by the way, this is a training. This is a training, so will help you in a spiritual life. Will help you, uh, you know, the, the Hindus they have yoga. We do not need their yoga. We have better yoga. We have, we have very, very, very wise teaching of the Lord. And we have eyes and we have heart. Why we don't use them? One more? Okay. Have you ever before, any of you practiced such a thing before? I mean, before me? Anyone before he... Uh, uh, he's, you know, like he thought about what we are doing like today? Let us see. Okay, I found something very interesting. So what we doing, Tali? Well, this is not so we don't, This is the opposite. This is so. This is pictures with comment. We are not making it without. <laughs> this is totally the opposite. Look at this gentleman. Uh, I believe he is like, you know, this is like a kind of a taxi in India, you know. It's like a bicycle where people sit in the back. Right? What do you think about this person? What do you think? Hard worker. Okay. Uh, be aware of those, you know, like there is filthy people coming here in the chat. All right. Don't click at their they come back, you know, they are like bugs. You see here example of the bugs of life. This is a creature, a human being. He's going around to spread sex website. 
so you know he can steal your password and you go there to the website and they have a spyware be aware of those filthy creatures you see god he created all kind of people but yes there is bugs but they look like a human being and this is one of them perverted people so what do you think about this person strong man strong old man absolutely he is strong i mean how this man in this age he is able to 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 put people behind him and uh, you know um, work hard work what else do you think anyone anyway those people they cannot post a big uh, website here because a website is banned so only the text is, is appearing so let them waste their time no problem <clears throat> what else you can't tell me yeah anyone can call but we have a topic is about those pictures Yeah, those people are hackers so they you know you ban them they come back don't worry about them they will notice that their link is not going through so they will leave strong what else that's it strong old man happy with life okay He wait to carry you. Interesting. Proud. Hmm. I'm not sure about this one. Proud. Do he look proud? I know. A man who knows his way around. Interesting. A fighter. Look like he enjoy his job. Hmm. Experience traveling traveler person he used to posing for photos <laughs> that's a good one funny one <clears throat> don't seem happy life experience very dignified proud man humble deep thinker very interesting well, you see, many of us do not notice. You know, there's many things in this picture, actually. Like we saw that he is strong. I don't know why you think he's strong. Is that because he put his foot in the top of the... Or, or maybe because he is driving a bicycle where people he have to take them? You know, when you are living in a poor society, life is very tough. And doing this job is not because you are strong, not necessarily, but because this is what you can do and this is what is available, otherwise you will be homeless. This person, many of you think that he is enjoying what he is doing. I don't think so. But let us say he adjusts his life to what he has. Imagine yourself in this age. This guy maybe in his 70 something. And yet to make living, you have to drive a bicycle all day long. People sit behind you and give you a few rubies. So what do you do with a few rubies? Just to buy some bread to eat. Survive. Very simple life. Very basic. This person for sure he have no retirement tomorrow god knows what will bring to him i see in his face and i'm going to zoom in his face so you can focus because most of you may be focused in the physical body in the position of his in himself on the uh, on in his uh, bike 
but we did not really focus in the face. What do you think? Good move, beard. Boring for life. He looked almost like he is sad. Sad inside. Tired. Some confusion. I'm just reading the comment. Look happy. I mean, look at the different. The, there is, there is a, the very, very opposing ideas about what we see. We are seeing the same picture. But if you look at the comment, everyone he have his own way to see the face. You know, one of the amazing things that when you reach the point that you are very, very uh, poor, because obviously he's very poor, your life, or let's say the system of life you're used to it as a poor person, will make you subdued. Like you give up. I see this person, he give up to the life he have. I don't see him strong. Maybe physically he's strong, but he give up. He give up and he is doing the same thing maybe since he was a child. All his life is doing the same thing and he own nothing except this cart. So his entire life doing the same job with no security, with no guarantee for tomorrow, with no accomplishment, and he submit. Maybe he submit to God, say, God, you are my provider. Maybe he submit to life, well, what, what I can do, I'm just poor. I can change it, there's nothing better. How many of you wish to be in his place? Those words said, he is thinking about his children and grandchildren. He is happy, and content. Anyone like to be him? Let us be honest. Because the one who see him happy, do you like to be him? Why we don't like to be him? What happened? What is the reason you don't like to be him? No way, somebody's saying. Hmm. He is not a Christian. No, we are not talking about as a Christian. You never know. He might be a Christian. How do you know? You know, Indian people, they have the customs and clothes and etc. You know, maybe he's Hindu, maybe he's a Christian. At the end of the day, he's a human being. We are talking about the human being. Right? Proud Indonesian says he's a loser. Why he's a loser? You see, he's poor. You see, proud Indonesian, he said he's a loser. Okay. So, if every poor is a loser, 
that's that's shame on you to say that because he's poor because he have no better choice maybe he never been in school maybe he never have a chance to somebody to pay for his school I remember a story I've been told about a guy who is an orphan he's an orphan he cannot afford to go to school this is a long time ago you know this is a story my dad told me he got a kid and they agreed to fight together why because if they fight they go to jail and then in jail they will teach them how to write how to read so what do you expect from a person like this? I mean, there is nothing, nothing. The life provides them nothing. He have no parents. He have no father, no mother. He's, he's just a street boy. He wish, he wished to go to school. Imagine they decide to go to jail to learn. This person, he is born in a poor society. Opportunity is zero. So he is a loser for what? because you don't have what you have the fact it might be the opposite because he have nothing he's born in a poor society but look he is not begging for money like many I see in the street here in USA people who they are six foot tall very healthy holding a card in his hand I am unemployed please give me some money to buy a sandwich how shameful this person is not begging for money. He is more than 70 years old and he is working for his food and he is a man. He's a real man. I respect him. He is poor because he is born in India and everybody around him is poor. The income is low. The opportunity is very limited and I'm sure he didn't ever been in school so I think this person deserves respect he can sit in the floor in the ground and say look at me I'm old man you know please feed me look he's not doing that he's a hard-working man so all what we said about this person which is bringing many contradictions to how he is he's tough he's sad he is content he is happy uh, somebody saying he have a grandsons he is proud of them etc but the most important is he's independent even though in his age you see when we get old we need assistant you know, especially if you are born in countries where there is no security. There is no retirement. Who is going to feed this person if he gets sick? This person should be sitting at home, watching TV. Retired. I saw a video actually about a journalist sitting in from Iraq. He got killed. Imagine the filthy... Uh, mullahs they killed him because this person in the video he was saying look at this old woman she is like 90 years old and she is pushing a car to sell ice and water you believe it because of this video they killed him they killed him and they killed the one who is holding the camera because a country like Iraq full of oil yet there's someone in the age of your grandma selling ice and water in the street pushing a cart which a camel cannot push for me i have to pay respect for this man for he did not yes he submit he surrender i'm poor country that live i, I live in is poor no opportunity very poor people but look he submit yes but he is working he did not and he is not begging for money so somebody else will feed him
Let us see. That is the real definition of corruption. I'm not sure what you mean. The majority of rich people are Christians and Jews. I think you guys should give half of your money to the people. You see, Indonesian Muslims, when tsunami hit Indonesia, number one country in the world to donate money is American. And at the same time, the, Amer the Muslims, they were celebrating the death of the infidel in, uh, because of tsunami. And they start posting Photoshop pictures of tsunami killing the infidels who don't worship Allah because they thought that those who die there are Muslims. Sorry, non-Muslims. So what are you talking about? And about being rich, who is the who is the Sultan of Brunei? Who is the King of Saudi Arabia? Who is the Prince of Qatar? They have money to build a mosque in, the, in Manhattan, but they don't have money to send to Somalia. We are the one who is sending rescue to Somalia, and we are the one who is feeding the poor Muslims. So shame on you. When a woman, she was dying in the desert, and the man, he walked by, she told him, please, some food, and she is a Muslim woman, and he is a Muslim man. He said, take off your panty, and I will give you food. The woman is dying. She took off her panty. And then she went to Umar al-Khattab, the caliphate, and she told him, this person here raped me. He told her, tell me the story. Umar, the fifth Umar, he said, this is your dowry. Imagine. This is your dowry. If you go to the Quran, it says that those who want to do, oh, let me let me show you the verse. Just because this, you know, they like they love to disturb our peace, but it's okay. Let us give them some spank. Look what the Quran is saying about the orphans. Chapter 4, verse number 3. Read and laugh at your filthy Quran. If you fear that you shall not be able to deal justly with the orphan, then go and have sex with women, not married. It doesn't say married. It says nikah. Women of your choice, what the, what the orphan have to do with here, with Mary? marrying women or having sex with women okay it says be good to the orphan okay we got that then what do you mean if you fear that you shall not be able to be dealing justly with the orphan then go and do nikah to women he's saying What, what he's saying? What is the connection? If you go to chapter 65, verse number 4, it's talking about divorcing little children. This is your prophet, my friend. Talking about rich and poor. Are they the orphan? Who you married them for sex? You refuse to give them a sandwich unless they marry you? Go and read the interpretation of chapter 65, verse number 4. It says, those children who they are too young to have their period, and now we are talking about divorcing them. That is your religion. Talking about the poor and the rich. Go and see what the Muslim did to the refugee from Syria, in Jordan, in Saudi Arabia. They raped their women. They start buying their women. Go to Germany and see the Syrian. They've been given a free apartment, free education, free health insurance. Go to USA, go to France, wherever you go. The Christian, they take Muslim refuge and they give them everything for free. Go to Muslim country and see what they give to a refugee. This is why Muslims don't want to go to Muslim countries. 
This is why they are desperately trying to go to the Kuffar land because the Muslim land is hell. Muslims are not fair. Muslims are, you know, in order for a Muslim to give you a dollar donation, he have to sleep with your daughter. When tsunami hit your country, you idiot, it was American who sent the most biggest money ever. The king of Saudi Arabia, he sent $10 million. $10 million? His bathroom cost more. I assure you that his bathroom cost more than $10 million. Now, we go back to our topic. Actually, we should not allow those people to disturb us in this topic because they are here just to disturb. Shall we show more pictures? Let us see. Hmm. I'm trying to find an interesting picture. <clears throat> Hmm. Uh, until now, I don't see really much. Interesting. Sometimes we get lucky, we find an interesting picture, but now I'm seeing just normal stuff. All right, we will take it to different level. Let us see how you guys you will think about this. What do you think when you see such a thing? Any thought? Masterful? Spider. Hmm. It's beautiful, someone saying. Natural, beautiful. God amazing creator creature amazing spider web remind me of Sidi Muhammad tales it is an art that is gold in perfect ratio a miracle spider trap spider myth of a cave hmm. Wormhole, smart insert, wonderful work of art, God fingerprint. You know, have you ever think about, I mean, how this is little tiny spider, he can think about this. Isn't it amazing? 
I mean, how even he start? And how he decide where to start from? You see, if you if you want to hang a picture in the wall, hmm, you will find yourself putting the nails in 10 different places and you get it wrong. How does little tiny insect Because if you don't notice with me, the middle is hanged on nothing, literally. The start is here, in the middle. How does little insect have such an engineering ability? Here. And how it is very, if you notice that the lines, they get, they extend, like the distance between them, bigger and bigger, the farther we go from the center. In the center, it's very tight. How this insect is learning this? You know, the amazing thing that those insects, they don't go through a training time, which means they don't have time even to be trained. Like we go to school as a human, uh, if to drive, we, we need to learn how to drive. To swim, we need somebody to teach us how to swim. Um, even to go to the bathroom, you need somebody to tell you how to go to the bathroom as a baby. Otherwise, you will do it everywhere. How does insects who have a very short life, some of them they live even for a few weeks, right away from the point of existence, they have a job to do and they do it perfectly. Right? Musti, musti, my friend, uh, we don't do a fair debate. We do spanking debate. You, you know, you did not debate even with David, with you cowards. You made fun of him because you are a bunch of cowards. You lied to him. And this is why you are running away from me. All of you are potatoes. All of you. My Skype is open. If there is any Muslim, have the guts, call me. Fear, open, debating. Go on, just to change your diaper. You know? Let me tell you why you are thinking you are running away from calling me. Because you think that Christian Prince, he have a whip spider web waiting for you and your legs are very long and they will hold there and he will grab your leg coward potatoes man enough and call me christian prince he humiliate islam and he humiliate the god of islam and the potato muhammad sitting in his short drinking his tea and his coffee in his comfort zone you like it do it. You don't like it? Go drink camel urine. Any Muslim would like to explain to us? The fact is that Muhammad the filthy Muhammad he said in the Quran that the most weak person, uh, weak house is the house of the spider. Anyone here agree with that? Who here agree that the house of the spider is the most weak one? Is it really weak, the house of the spider? What do you think? Anyone can tell us? Is the house of the spider weak? You can go right now to Google and you will find that according to scientific uh, study, that the spider web can be the best bullet proof very extremely strong you know do you see how thin the line of the spider yet it can carry him so how that can be weak 
imagine little tiny saliva come from your mouth. And that saliva is going to carry your body. Let's say you are a 200 pound. Hmm? How that can be weak? So the one who made the example is very stupid because the house of the spider is one of the strongest, can resist storms, rain, even snow, and insect go there, big ones, and they cannot get out. And if we go right now, some of you can do it right now. Search, search on Google about the spider web, how strong it is. It's amazing. <clears throat> Every night I have a cat and this cat, she come to visit me. She jump in the window. It's a hunter cat, you know, those uh, a hunter, it's like a real tiger. This cat, he walked, you know, like he walked like slowly and he's watching like between the grass, if anything move. <laughs> anyway, this spider is, uh, let us say, is used as a term in our life in many ways. Actually, we are in the spider network this is what they call it the whip right the whip the whip is coming from here you open a whip site because you notice that this is a connection net there's like wiring going around and it doesn't matter where you go which line you take, you will end in the middle. Very smart creation to survive. The spider is very smart. He don't want to go to work. He work once. He made a web. He go to sleep. His job is one time done job. He make the web, he go take a nap, he wake up when an insect hit his whip and start shaking it. Very smart. Hmm. Very interesting. I create a system which will give me comfort and I am a created to get rid of insect but he himself is an insect so what we can say here that God he made a balance so those insect will not go and increase in a certain way so snakes have a reason to exist Spiders have a reason to exist. The insect who the spider eat them have a reason to exist, but there's a balance. And the adjustment of this balance is here. The chain of food is a balance. There's many people, they hate spider, right? I mean, they get scared from it. And actually it can be very dangerous. Some spider can kill you. Like in, in Australia, Australia, spiders there are very, very, very dangerous, very poisonous. You know, like uh, their, their, their bite is really harmful. But at the end of the day, we cannot forget that all of this is a balance. It's a system built in an amazing millions, if not billions, of kind of insect. But all of them make us survive, make you as a human survive. How many of you hate cats? Anyone hate cats? Who hate cats here? Anyone? <clears throat> 
Okay, how many of you like cats? You hate cats? Okay, we find some people, they hate cats. Why you hate cats? Why you hate them? Look, this cat is looking at you like, what? You hate me? Like, what? You are allergic to cat, but that's not a reason to hate them, right? <coughs> I dislike cats, okay. They are spoiled. You see, spoiled because you spoil them, but they are not spoiled. Cats are very useful, you know, creature. They can kill snakes. They can free your yard from spiders. They can save your children, actually. Cats are very powerful creature, by the way. Cats can fight dogs. They chase dogs. They can even kill dogs. Cats even, they can scare a bear. You believe it? Go and watch videos on YouTube. Very powerful creature. But at the same time, it's very sneaky and make you, uh, let us say, a cat is a tricky, they, they make you uh, feed them like meow, meow, like the simple, but cats are really powerful. So cats can be very useful if you don't spoil them and feed them 24 hours a day, which means let them hunt for their food. Feed them a little bit so they come to the yard, but don't feed them every day by yourself. Let them hunt. Clean your yard from insect, bad stuff, spiders, whatever. They can kill snakes easy. Right? Cat, the way, is our prophet most favorite? Well, I don't know about that. Where it says that your prophet, you like cats. Okay, let us talk about this. Your favorite, your, your, your prophet favorite is cats? I never saw your prophet have a cat. Can you show me a hadith? I don't remember one. I remember there's a guy, his name is Abu Huraira, the father of cats, because he have too many cats around him. But your prophet, he hate dogs. And obviously, he has a mental issue with dogs. He has a phobia. Especially black dogs. Right? Black dogs scare your prophet to death. And here you see that Muhammad is an immature person. First, he believed in superstition. He believed that the black dog is the devil, which is very stupid of him, obviously. He's mentally ill. Secondly, he's racist. He think that just because of your color, you are evil. So because this poor dog is a black, he's evil. And this is additional proof that Muhammad is mentally ill and he is not a good example to follow. In fact, Muhammad, he hate all dogs. And he ordered to kill all dogs. And he said, if dogs is not a nation, like other nations, I would love to kill you, all of you. And that is due, you know, due to, the, to the mental illness Muhammad is suffering from. If you go in the, in the, in the Muhammad Yellow Pages book, the Quran or in the Hadith, we will find the following. Hmm. The Prophet, he raised his voice and he ordered all dogs to be killed. Accept the dogs for harding and how he accepted that because people they complain otherwise he start killing all the dogs People they complain and they said to him well, we have dogs for harding for our sheep So after he killed all the dogs He agree to let some dogs live for his filthy man 
you don't eat dogs like Christian in Indonesia. You, you drink camel urine. And I don't know about eating dogs if Christian he eat the dogs. Maybe the Christians who eat dogs in Indonesia, as you claim, uh, maybe because they used to be uh, Buddhas before. I'm not sure about that. But uh, what about eating a human, Mr. Indonesian? Do Islam teach you to eat a human? So you don't eat dogs, but you eat a human. Do you like to call me and I will show you that you Muslims believe in eating a human? Right now? Just to show you how coward they are. Do you dare to call me and I will show you right now that you Muslims are ordered and you are allowed to eat a human? Are you there? Why you don't call me? Are you the same as Fifi? No CP. It doesn't say that. Call me and say no CP. Do you there? Who there? Who is a Muslim here there to call me right now? My Skype is open. And we will see if Islam teach you to eat a human or not. Uh, look like maybe I don't know maybe we have a Muslim let us see this guy we missed his call <clears throat> hmm, look like he don't have internet it's a bad day to call I will call you at night time hmm you know, you remind me of a guy. He was a Muslim too. He is very proud. He want to beat everybody. But the second I want to fight with him, he says, uh, today is not good. Day. Tomorrow we will fight. Tomorrow. Uh, today is not really, you know, I'm, my, my arm is hurting. I'm not really ready. Uh, just next week. And we, we, never fight. we never have a fight. But he want to fight everybody. I was a kid at that time. This is you. When the last time you called me? Proud Muslim, when the last time you called me? So tonight is not, today is not a good day. When that, when that day, the good day, which you can call me is coming, is going to happen this year, next year, next century? All of you are Fifi and Mimi. Excuses. Hmm? you will call me at night okay until you call me at night I'm going to block you because you are just disturbing our topic and you are being stupid we are not even talking about Islam and you come like a, like bugs from time to time so look at this every one of us have different uh, let us say idea about animals some they have they hate dogs they are scared of dogs some they love dogs some they hate cats some they love cats some even they grow spider in their house they have like a tank where they grow spider or a snake some they go crazy if they see a spider or a snake so why every one of us we as a human yet we have different reception for animals or creatures What do you think? What is really the reason? Why not all the human they love the same animals? Why some of us hate dogs or fear dogs? Some of us like cats or hate that cats. What is the reason? I trust dogs more than a human. Yeah, maybe. Maybe this just can be true. <clears throat> what do you think? 
For sure, dogs is a great uh, animals to have, especially in the old days. I mean, you know, old days they are, I mean, they are the best friend. Farmers, people of villagers, until now, if you are a villager, if you are a person who have sheep, you have etc. The dog is is hard working actually, uh, beside you. If you go watch the videos in YouTube of those who do harding, you will find that the dog is the one who's doing all the job, not the man. The man is just sitting in his ass doing nothing. So those can very can be very uh, smart, uh, protective. They can protect your family, and they can be harmful too. But why all of us we don't have the same feeling for the same animals? You know, I will tell you about cats as I, I, I think about them. I think cats are very useful, but they are not trustworthy and they are not loyal. This is true, right? Cats are very useful, but don't feed them. Like you can have them in your house. If you have insects, they will kill them. If they if a snake gets inside your yard, they will they will kill it. Doesn't matter how, how powerful the snake is. As long as you don't feed them. Like you know, you feed them just to keep them in the house from time to time. But if you make them lazy, they are I mean what the use of a cat in the house? If she is lazy and she became fat, she can't even walk. There is no need. But dogs are loyal. And they have a feeling to you and because they have feeling that make them dangerous by the way because their emotion is strong not like the cats the cats is kind of a programmed insect like the spider they see nothing new except somebody providing food they can replace their owner in a second and they will not even feel that the owner is gone Dogs, they cry if you die. Literally, they cry. So, what I'm trying to say that all animals can be useful, depend how we approach them and how we use them. And animals, they use us too. There's many people, they own dogs, but the dogs, he own them. It's not the opposite. So, today we mention many pictures, we show many things, and we come to different conclusions about them. And we notice that we, when we judge picture, we just try to understand the person by the look. And most likely, we are going to have a wrong decision based on the look. Like Muhammad, the black dog is the devil. The little dog is fine. We should not do that. We should always do our best to judge by the fruits. And that even goes for animals. Right? Uh, uh, Laurie saying about uh, cats have I'm not saying cats don't have emotion no my friend they feel pain they are a creature God he gave them blood and feeling this is not what I meant but what I mean that cats don't even miss you if you go really I mean they can change the owner easy dogs they get hurt if their owner disappear dogs are very attached to the person Especially if the dog he grew up with you since he was a puppy. All right? Anyway, so the, the time we spent today, uh, it was very uh, useful. I hope that's what we did today. It was a great training for our brain and the way we think and the way we see things. Uh, it's very important. But we have a person here is ask he want to ask a question about Paul. I don't want to forget him, even if this is not our topic. Let us see. Where is this gentleman? Okay, what is your question, my friend?
No, I know cats actually. My, you know, in my parents' house, their house is kind of, uh, you know, we have a lot of trees, big yard, uh, cats, you know. No, we have actually. But cats are not loyal. They don't really care. They don't care. I'm waiting for this gentleman who have a question about Paul. About Tafsir al Qurtubi, Sunan, and the Messenger of Allah, which mentioned in the Quran. And that's it, what we will talk about it. It is a story of how the Christian became polytheist because of Paul. Okay. Okay, he's saying it's funny. Okay, maybe a wrong time. I thought you have a question, my friend, about Paul. This is not a question about Paul. This is a question about Islam. All right. Uh, exactly, you know, cats, cats, they can return to the place where they grow or they, I say, they, they used to live, but they are not about the person. Dogs are different. Dogs are dogs are very loyal. However, I believe that God He created all animals for a reason, and the smart of us who is use those animals in a smart way. If you own a dog and this dog is controlling you, that's mean we are not doing the right thing. If you own cats especially though there's many some people they have like 10 cats I don't know what that, that is kind of a disorder of thinking I mean why do you want to have 10 cats in an apartment there's something wrong well obviously this person feels too much lonely and maybe we should make a video about being lonely and animals you know company of an animal is very good it's very healthy actually especially if you're a person look you live yourself by yourself uh, you're an old person animal can help you really a lot from being alone uh, but you should not exaggerate in how many animals you have because then you will be like just owned by them they are controlling you uh, I remember once there was I was living in an apartment after a dog, after a dog, after a dog. I mean, I was counting one, two, three, four, five. Six. I think it was like eight dogs. Eight dogs? Why in the world a human being who live in a city, obviously in an apartment, will have eight dogs? What? what do you, why do you need eight dogs? That is a disorder. That is something wrong. That's mean this woman, she spent her life just with those dogs. She have no life. Because those dogs, they need somebody to take care of them. You know, you remember in the Bible it says that Sabbath was made for the man, not the man made for Sabbath. Some people, they do the opposite. Animals are made for the man, not the man is made for the animals. Some people, they made them, themselves the opposite. So they, are, they became... Uh, uh, they became uh, servants and slaves of those... Animals. Cloudy Kaaba Twilight, thanks and blessing from Tokyo. Hey, my friend Cla Cloudy, you are from Tokyo. I want to go to Japan, my friend. Actually, I was planning to go to Japan last year, but because it was very expensive, I did not go. Like, uh, uh, rent there is very expensive. Still, I'm planning to go. Actually, I love to go to Japan. Maybe in the future I will be uh, able to go there. I uh, because I was in Korea and I have some extra time. I said to myself, actually I went to Japan already, 
but I mean, I want to go to Tokyo, specifically to Tokyo, and it was really expensive. The rent there is very expensive. <clears throat> Actually, you believe it or not, it, your name is a cloudy Kaaba toilet. <laughs> uh, uh, the first time I went to Japan, I took a picture of the of the bathroom. The bathroom in the airport, like I was like I was like a guy coming from a village, you know, who never saw a bathroom before. I mean, the bathroom in the in the uh, airport in, in in Japan, it's like a surgery room. Electronic devices, everything. There's a bomb for hot water, cold water for your bum. I mean, I, I took a picture. Honestly, I don't. I couldn't believe it. That this is a bathroom. I, I thought I entered a wrong room. I never saw something like this before. Never. And the bathroom was so super clean. It's like a surgery room. You know. So maybe uh, one day I can go and uh, meet uh, this uh, brother there in Tokyo. Uh, you are not alone? What does that mean, Shinta? Yeah, I took a picture of the toilet. I have them, actually. I have them. I have them in, my, uh, in the cloud. Yeah, because it was kind of uh, strange. You see, I, I've been in many places in the world. I never saw such a thing before. You, you, you will not understand what I'm talking about unless you go and see. I, I will try to find those pictures so I can show you what I'm talking about. You know? <clears throat> yeah, actually, I can look for it. I'm sure I will find it. And the funny, I went to, <laughs> I mean, this was the first picture I took in Japan. <laughs> a bathroom. <laughs> you know, because, you know, when you say to people how, how it is, uh, which is very uh, high tech, very high tech, you know, you are in Japan, welcome to Japan. Uh, but if you describe to people, they won't understand. I mean, they will say, well, why this guy is making it a big deal? What, what is a big deal? It's a bathroom. How many of you have been in the airport in Japan? Anyone? I wish in America we can have the same. We don't. You know, I mean... We have big airports, yes, we have, etc. But uh, it's not really that, uh, not that good. Yeah. <clears throat> but anyway, thank God I don't live in, a, in Japan because it's very expensive. And if you are even a wealthy person, you will not be able to buy a little tiny apartment. Uh, you know, uh, a property there is extremely expensive, very small, very tiny. And uh, I, I know I cannot, I don't really like it. But to visit will be a wonderful experience to be there, you know. But to live there, I don't think so. I think the price like I saw in Korea, the price of a small, tiny apartment studio is like $600,000. Very scary. I mean, how you can afford it? Very expensive. Yeah. Anyway, guys, I want to say thank you. And there's Earthquake for free. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's Earthquake. Uh, uh, you know, many of us, we have lucky things, but we don't notice. Got a nice beach house. You can have all yourself. Thank you, Cloudy. I appreciate that. God bless my friend. Uh, you know, there's many of us, maybe we are born in a poor country, like, you know, you're Indonesian as an example. But you are lucky. There's many good things people, they dream to have. You know, a villager... A villager who live in a, an island 
in Indonesia. He have all this beautiful scene, the beautiful scenery, uh, every day. Simple life. You are poor, yes, but you have a you have really a good life. Then you will see somebody. He will live in different place in Europe. He work all year long to do what? To go and stay in your island for two weeks. <laughs> You know what I mean? He is the one who lives supposedly in a fancy country, rich country. But he work hard to get two weeks of your weeks. Just two. Good night, Sonia. You know, you know what I'm saying? So which one of us is having a better life? The poor guy who live in a small tiny village in the beach, very beautiful. Or this guy who have a big salary, but yet he cannot have your two weeks in the beach. Do you remember before? Uh, we quoted a story about a guy who went to a village. This is like, let us finish with this story. Supposedly a businessman, he was going vacation and he saw a fisherman. Uh, very poor fisherman, you know, he's just a fisherman. That's what he do for a living. So, you know, he, he found him sitting in the coffee shop. You know, they have like a village coffee shop, very simple. Where villagers and fishermen, uh, they sit and, you know, they have a good time. So the businessman, he asked the fisherman, so how many hours you work a day? The fisherman, he said, ah, I go very early. Uh, by 10 o'clock in the morning, I'm done. And he said to him, Why you, what, you do, what, do you do, what do you do after that? What do you do after those? Uh, hours, the rest of the day. Should I relax? I said, relax, enjoy, have fun, meet my friends, we talk, having a good time. Okay. The businessman, he said to him, why you don't fish many hours so you can save more money and then you have a better income? Uh, the fisherman, he said to him, okay, after I have better income, what I would do? He said, then you can buy uh, Instead of having one boat, you can have to have a three, four, five boats. Fisherman, he said, okay, after having three, four boats, what I would do? He said, you hire people to work as fishermen for you. And then you became really, you, you, you start having more and more money. The fisherman, he said, okay, and what after I have this? He said, then you establish a company for fishing. And hundreds of people will work for you. And then... Uh, you became a big, uh, big, big, big company. The fisherman said, okay, after I got this and became a big company and hundreds of people working for me, what, what happened? He said, then you will have a stock, you know, your company will be in the stock market. You will become extremely rich. And then the fisherman, he said, okay, and after I became extremely rich, I, my company in the stock market, what I would do? He said, then you can go and relax. In the beach. The fisherman he said to him, but I am already relaxing. <laughs> I'm already now, I just told you, I walk three hours a day. And, then, <laughs> and the rest of the day, I'm just relaxing with my friends. I mean, do you see the madness? So he was trying to convince the fisherman to work like a donkey so he can relax, which he have already. So all of this to tell me I will sit in the beach again? I am in the beach already. I'm relaxing. I'm happy. I'm fine. So this was an advice of a fool businessman. And this is what happened to many of us. We think that if we collect more money and more money and more money, we will be happy and when at the end of the day what to become like a villager so the villager really is happy more than you his life is simple 
his production is enough for him and he's enjoying vacation you don't enjoy how many vacation I will enjoy in my life you know if you ask yourself a very simple question okay let us say you are 60 years old how many weeks of the 60 years old person you had for yourself for good time you might find yourself have a few weeks because most of people by the way their job don't allow them to take more than 15 days vacation total in the whole year and that you know 15 days will go through a year you know you have to go to uh, somebody wedding party somebody occasion etc your vacation is gone so there is the majority of Americans they never even been in foreign country which means they don't even have a passport this is why I say to those who they are from Indonesia you should be uh, happy especially if you are a person who live not in a very crowded crazy city uh, let us say small simple town uh, close an island to a beach you know, enjoy your life enjoy your life Martin Elias saying you've been always a Christian no I, I cannot say I've been always a Christian because if you by birth well by birth that does not make me a Christian yes I'm born from a Christian family but you remember the Bible says you have to be reborn again right so there's nothing there's no one is always a Christian we make a choice and we be our Christian so guys I want to say thank you for being here I hope we have a good time was it a good uh, marathon with pictures today do you like us to repeat this uh, this uh, this marathon this uh, uh, let us say relaxing time and uh, thinking about pictures for me I find it very uh, useful uh, I find it very helpful to 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 do some training to our brain so we think deeper and we learn how to think deep not to be shallow and because we are a group and every one of us he come with an idea those ideas they will open doors for us so we see in this image something I did not see before by your help I see it and that's why I'm asking like what do you see in this picture what do you see in that picture because when each one of us he give his opinion those who did not see that opinion they will think about it they will learn from it very good training for your brain and in the same time it's kind of a spiritual in the same time we learn that we should not really judge by an image sometimes the image can be deceiving very deceiving judged by the fruits so i want to say thank you for being here i hope we have a good time uh, feel free to download my video share it with your friends soon we delete them and we see you soon again christ is our guidance his wisdom is the way his teaching is the best for us to learn from and his practice is the best proof of his good teaching and that's why he said that from their fruits you shall know them the same as those fishermen imagine they go to fish but they never come back with a fish so how we know they are fishermen is that because they are in the boat no because they come back with the fish that what make them fishermen is not being fishing it is the fish you bring that make you really a fisherman so be fisherman as the disciple of Christ they've been a fisherman and they are really fishermen who fish so they can save a human being and bring them to Christ thank you may the Lord bless you all and have an enjoy your coming weekend for those who they are already in Friday in Indonesia and India etc and I will see you tomorrow Christ is Lord and everything else is false thank you and see you